What's up guys, Josh Spoon here with the Producers Kitchen, and I'm here with a tutorial on how to sequence Ableton Live using the iPad app patterning. So let's take a look. So the first thing I wanna do inside of Ableton Live is allow patterning to talk to live. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing that, just hooking up your computer to the iPad, either wirelessly or wired. Um, there's a lot of options right now, but I'm using the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. So I'm able to hook up a cable into the iPad and it goes in the back of the 4 Plus. And then I can route the MIDI and even the audio straight into live or whatever I want. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but you know you can look online and check out a couple of ways to do that. So once that's done, I can open up my preferences and go to the MIDI sync. And then in mine, my USB one hub is the iPad. So what I'm gonna do is turn on track so I can allow to send notes from the iPad to Ableton Live. And then I'm gonna go and click on sync so that, that I can get the clock from patterning into live. Once that's done, I can close this, and then I'll click this EXT that just showed up. And you see that the tap tempo and the tempo are now grayed out. The stop is grayed out because it's now controlled by patterning. So now I can go over to the patterning right here, and I'm gonna start a new project. And let's see if I can see this far over here, live template. So I'm just gonna set this up as a template. So if I need to do this again, I can just open up live template and all the routing is already set up. I don't have to do it over. So I'll just do new live template. Then I go to this MIDI configuration, click on that. I already have the clock set up because I've done this before. So I have send clock. I click on that and I make sure it's set to on my audio four USB two, but this would be whatever is on here, like maybe Josh's MacBook, if your name is Josh, um, but whatever setting that is. So mine is USB 2. I'm gonna go back to MIDI setup, and then I'm gonna start uh, setting up the outputs for all of my tracks here. So I'm gonna turn on five of these, because I have in live, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm actually gonna move this chain over so that I can easily just go C1, C sharp one, C, you know, and just go up. So I have these five on, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to tell it to send it out to live for each note and tell it which note to send out. So the first one, I'm gonna click on it, and I can even set channels for these, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And in this pitch right here, um, we have C4, which is middle C, but in live, middle C is C3. So what I'm gonna have to do to trigger C1, uh, the kick drum right here, I'm gonna have to make this go to C2 because it's off by an octave. So if I hit C2, just drag it, hey. There we go, C2. And then I need to change the MIDI port. So the MIDI port's gonna be the USB 2 of my 4 Plus. Then I'll go back, then I'll do the same thing with the next one. I'll do C sharp 2. I kind of drag back like a drunk, I'm like sort of going down. Uh, so we'll go back. Oh, take it off of patterning, because you don't want it to trigger patterning, you want it to trigger whatever it's sending out to, which is live. So go back and that's supposed to be C sharp two, stay there. All right, then oh, I did the other one, C sharp two. All right, that's D2. And it's USB two, you know, tedious stuff the life of a electronic music producer, dragging notes slowly to set them up, nerdy stuff. Hey, there we go. D sharp two. Change that from patterning to USB two, back, back, right, 
right, right, right, right. That says E flat, whatever. I never like E flat. I like D sharp. Okay, so down to E two. USB two. Coming out of the four plus. Let's double check all this. Okay. In review, send. Sending to Audio Plus USB two. And then each one of these is sending to the right place, right? And now that's done. We'll hit done. And let's see if it works. Okay, so let's start sequencing inside of patterning. So I'm just going to start the clock. As we can see, patterning is working. If we look up, tap tempo has been um, inactivated, the tempo and the stop button. Everything is being controlled here. So let's make a beat. I changed the BPM to 96 because I was born in the 80s. So we got a little beat. Let's record that. The reason that's all off, my latency is really, really high. So um, I'll just let you see that the way it is. Uh, I don't want to mess with the latency while I'm recording, but grab it, shift it over. But uh, yeah, so grabs that and let's see if we could do something else real quick. That's not occupied. Go to MIDI, turn on number five. Change the note to Let's see, C4 or C5, that's fine. Change that to USB 2. And then go to 7. And then change that to F5, USB 2. And this one. G5, <coughs> excuse me, all right, on, 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 G5, change that one to USB 2, should be done, and actually let's go back and change these three as well to MIDI channel 2, channel 2 
MIDI channel 2, and we're going to use this to power this other track here that is a synth. So I'll change this to all in's fine, one, all in, two, and I'll press command. Hey, there we go. Select both tracks, and let's see what we get. Um, so one, two, three, four sounds. Make sure this is right. Five sounds. So what did I do with crash? One, two, three, four, five. Channel two. Oh, I didn't change that to channel two. There we go. So turn this off. So with patterning as the sequencer, we made a nice beat and a melody all with this one device. Patterning is really great because if you don't know how to make music very well, it's got a nice interface that can kind of walk you through the steps. And if you know music very well, you can do all sorts of things with this. So check it out on the App Store, Patterning, just do a search for it. I'm Josh Spoon for the Producer's Kitchen. See you later.